myself in the head with an Ocean Vung book. Look at this, sun rays, sun rays on this gorgeous Monday. Major updates. We finished reading Blue in Chicago is exactly what I've detailed it as. This caricature of Chicago dealing with race, class, social issues. Very heavy with the wordplay. Definitely recommend it if you are fans of Lucia Berlin, Renata Adler. Oh, if anyone's read Pond, um, it's very much like that. Big on observations, no concrete stories. My favorite story was, ah uh, yes, Power Failure, about a mother who dreams of her children, of them being younger, and it's just this really nice meditation on aging, time passing, and yeah, what it means to be a mother. All the bearings. Can't believe I crunched through all of that. This is one of those books where you can read a short, it's a short story collection, but really they're just long observations. I recommend just having this, okay, don't come for me, but like have it in the bathroom. Ever feel like needing to read, not busy work or just, if you require inspiration while moving bowels, can't go wrong with this. Can't believe I said that. Um, moving on, we are reading, we just started, Lauren Euler's fake accounts. I am actually enjoying it so far. The writing is a bit laborious. I'm realizing that with like these new New York novels that I'm reading, like uh, Luster, New People, and the writing style is very laborious. It takes a lot of mental work to crunch through like even a single sentence because they go on for paragraphs. It's been training my brain a lot, which I like. So I'm paying attention more, and I haven't really read a narrative as such, but it takes place during the Trump era, and we follow this girl who is dating an anonymous internet conspiracy theorist. Kind of sick, kind of twisted. is a major reflection of how we talk on the internet, how we present our ideas to each other. It's this like huge contemporary mirror. Almost hits way too close to home. Kind of scary. But also, we got book mail so soon. All the way from Boston. Not Boston, Massachusetts. Somewhere around Boston. But yes, Odyssey Bookshop sent this lovely package of three books. We got Jessica Au's Cold Enough for Snow. Love that cover. Look at that. So simple. It reminds me of that Instagram filter. Do you know what I'm talking? You know what I'm talking about. It's like the faves Instagram filter where it shows like nine. Anyway, um, yes, excited to read this gorgeous cover. A lot of people seem to have enjoyed it about a mother and daughter relationship. Done with that. And y'all. Okay, wait. Let me get through this first. Pure color by Sheila Hetty. Excited to start this. I was originally gonna wait for a paperback version, but you know, we can do that. Hardback, it looks doable. And I believe, there it is. It's signed by Sheila Hetty. Yes, this I will cherish. April reading book, but I don't know if we have enough brain power for all of that. I mean, this is, I mean, it's not long, but it's like 300 pages, I think, right? 200 and something. I think this one's gonna take me a while, just cause I'm only 69, 69 pages in, um, yeah. But uh, y'all, here it is. What I've been waiting for for so long. <sighs> Time is a mother, ocean foam, and yes, Yes, it is a signed copy. And look at this. They like li library bound this. Look at that. I just hit myself in the head with the ocean fung book. Look at that. Um, let's find the signature. Oh, oh my God. 
There it is. There it is. Look at that signature. It's an O and a V. Don't you just love scribbles? Oh, look at that. The first poem is The Bull, which I believe was published in The New Yorker, I want to say. That poem, some odd years ago, really inspired a lot of poetry that I was writing at the time about Catholicism, queerism, father and son. How do you bridge what should feel like a relationship but never ends up being one? Anyway, is the update for Monday. We are excited. I am so happy to have these in my possession now. They feel so good. Buying things and having them come in the mail feels so good, doesn't it? But yes. We love, we love. How's this for a YouTube thumbnail? I'm thinking of going to Seoul this weekend to meet up with a friend, catch up on some galleries. Nothing too hearty this weekend. Same old, same old. Gonna chill, read my books. I can't believe I finished four books over the weekend. I truly, oh wait, May... other major update, y'all. Mind my negligence, he's crying right now. But my Tamagotchi evolved. I say that as if he's a Pokemon, but yes. Does this help? Um, he evolved into Mama Mechi. Yeah, he's crying right now. He is so needy. The last one, I don't know if I explained this already, but the first child that I had was so ugly, I had to kill him. Does no one talk about this? Like, the abortion of Tamagotchis? I like, it wasn't a mistake that I killed the child. I did it on purpose. It's not even abortion, it's like homicide. It's murder. Anyway, way too dark for a digital pet. But um, he is, this, this guy is way too needy. He's always crying, he's always hungry, always trying to call my attention, but he keeps on crying and I don't know what to do. I've done everything. I've bought him his favorite things. I've washed him up. I've uh, vacuumed the place. I've put him outside to play. I've had him meet people. Like, what more do you need? Like, with all of this, I'd be exhausted by the end of the day. I'd be taking a nap. Like, he should be taking a nap. That's it as far as updates go. Hopefully, I am not too social this month. I really would like to get through fake accounts and these two for April, before April ends. And maybe this, if time allows. Hope everyone has a good start to the week. Let me know what you're reading. I just added a bunch of books on my TBR, no, to read list on Goodreads. And I'm always enjoying putting more books on the list. Yes. <gasps> Wait! Um, this is embarrassing. Kind, well, eh. I want a giveaway from Books Actually, Little Bookshop in Singapore. Support your independent bookstores. Um, I won a giveaway for I Want to Die and Eat Takboki, I think it's called. Which is weird because it's a Korean book translated to English and I won the giveaway and I live in Korea, so is this Korean book being sent to Korea? Yeah. It's like buying... This is also embarrassing, um, I guess. Tony Molly, if anyone likes Tony Molly, I love their hand creams because they just smell genuinely like the fruit that they come in. Like I have a banana hand cream. It's essentially hand cream and it's shaped like a banana and it smells like a banana and it smells so good that I want to eat my hand. Anyway, I found out that there was a mango one, but it's sold out in Korea. They don't make it anymore. And so I went on eBay to buy them and absolute favorite. It smells like mango. It legit smells like mango and I want to eat myself, cannibalize myself. Anyway, I ordered some books from them as well because I just feel bad for asking someone to send me one book an ocean away and then yeah just that's not eco-conscious gotta make it a big thing right i think i would order four books so 
patiently awaiting that package as well. And that is it. No more books. No more books for me. I swear. I have way too many books now. Like, I think I'm good for the year. If I read a little slower, I think I'm good for the year. Because I really should not be buying any more books. Yeah. Yo, look at this. Ah. So, so excited for this. We are finally ready after a kajillion years. Um, why does it feel like I shouldn't even be going out now? <laughs> ah! Anyway, uh, yes, my bum bag, my uh, Uniqlo U from the latest season. Very Uniqlo La Mer. Love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should get going. Hello, it's Saturday. Uh, we were going to Seoul today. Wanted to do the fit check. Um, we got these wide olive trousers. Um, this like butter beige shirt. And uh, oh, don't mind my banana. Um, this is a uniform that I think Sony or Panasonic had to wear. Um, designed by Issey Miyake, and a little bandana from Ore, or, and of course, our Uniqlo U. I look like I'm going on a safari. Not sure if that's the vibe. Is that it? Is that the vibe? Who knows? Might lose it, might not, I don't know. We're gonna go see some art today. Lots of art, maybe a bookstore, cafe, all the usual content. Let's go.
Sunday. Um, slightly outfit repeating. We got the pants on that we wore yesterday. Um, aired them out for Brisa. They're good. Uh, little, little hanky. This nylon cropped shirt. It's a bit warm out today. Yeah. Woke up late. Um, gonna go to a cafe. Finish. What am I reading? Fake accounts. Yes. Let's go. so hot today it's like LA weather um hello we finished fake accounts uh, there's no real way to talk about this book without spoiling a bunch of things so um some first impressions just finished this like 20 minutes ago 30 minutes ago wow this is interesting because I was with my friend yesterday and we were talking about fake authenticity and living on the digital living in the digital world and how we want transparency all of us like transparency or this idea of transparency where there aren't these barriers and we're speaking openly and honestly but truth be told i don't think we really want authenticity. We just want this attention, this desire to be heard at all costs, whether it be bad or good or toxic. And this novel explores that in this really scary way. It hits way too close to home, the digital sphere and living in it. It's, it's kind of scary, this nihilistic self-obsession that we have always promoting our whereabouts and contentment to the point of extremity. Like when we post something, it's not so much mundanity, but almost this like extreme, or when we see things online, not so much like celebrity posts, but like um, the first example that comes to mind is a really, a really provoking dress let's say, Kim K wears. The internet is so fast in attacking her and deconstructing um, this dress and why it's being worn out in public. And it's th this, the digital sphere, we work in extremities. There's this need to constantly be either black or white. There isn't really a gray space that has room to be explored. I'm, and I think that feeds into how quickly we consume images and videos, given like TikTok and and things that are within seven or ten seconds. It's kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought I was getting hit with a surprise ending, and boy, did I was I surprised. Very, very wild turn of events. Very smart. Not a lot of people will like this, um, but if you are obsessed with the internet, if you feel like you live on the internet and you feel like you haven't really, haven't really processed the Trump era, this is an incredibly real novel that exists way too close to our current timeline. And I think that is so interesting given shows like, is it First Lady, First Woman, First Lady, um, these biopics of Michelle Obama, the Obamas, that it's so wild to me that these people who are still alive and well and living already are fictionalized, which is kind of crazy to me. Or um, 
that one girl who killed her or drove her boyfriend to suicide through text messages has a documentary or like the series already it's kind of crazy how media automatically churns real life events into entertainment for us way too soon there isn't this like uh this whole idea or if anybody's learned this it's like time plus tragedy equals comedy that there has to be distance and time and length in order to process something and we don't have any more time to process things because move, things move way too quickly. And uh, though this was sluggish, there were moments where I did fall asleep while reading this on the train. And these sort of meanderings, uh, there are some moments where lying through, yeah, straight up lies. Lies propel this novel. It's kind of crazy. And it just keeps going and going until you least expect it and yeah kind of phenomenal i think one of the most important books of the 21st century wait are we in the 21st century no we're in the 20th century yeah very thought-provoking good stuff i'm not done processing it will probably take a while but very smartly written yeah very good we are moving on to Leaf Society, which I think is a very timely read, right after this, where we are moving away from the digi digital sphere and looking towards reality and our bodies and health. So far as what it seems like Taolin is doing, as our narrator Lee is uh, living with his parents and sort of taking care, or not taking care, but looking over his parents' health in this so far. Yeah, um, seems to be in these like really short chapters in accordance to health. So yeah, hoping to finish this before the end of the month. It's at 352 pages. Yeah. Wait, update. Took off my hanky. Um, I was in this hole yesterday. Visited a friend, went to some, went to a gallery, uh, spent like two hours looking for food for dinner, uh, but everywhere was full. And we ended up in Hongdae for this like Ningmyeon place. But walking through Hongdae at night, oof, Saturday night, yikes. Don't miss that. Um, there was this giant box of NCT album books and Everyone was just passing by. It was like just next to garbage. And they were in super good condition. I had to take some. Um, so embarrassing, but I took two. Look at this. And it's like in pretty, really good condition. With like the CD and sticker and poster. It's pretty wild. <laughs> just out in the street. I got these and to think I was gonna buy this I didn't because I shouldn't buy stuff like this because it, it just takes up way too much space but if it's free it's for me yeah wanted to share this major steal crazy absolutely free sitting in the trash now mine yeah Okay, that's it. That was the update. Hope you're reading well. Hope you're seeing all the flowers in bloom. And be well.